On today's episode, this changes everything, but do you believe it? Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. You know, you can't swing a Louisville slugger these days without knocking over a coder, consultant, or expert who wants to revolutionize the way you make things using the industrial internet of things and Industry 4.0. And the argument is compelling. It's been transformative for companies like Toyota, or Boeing, Raytheon, and the other global heavyweights. And the connected nature of the technology means that the major tier ones, well, they've enjoyed the same benefits as well. For that 25-person shop in Amarillo making downhole tools, however, the situation, well, it's not quite so clear. The fact is, to make these new connected technologies work, the manufacturing enterprise, big or small, has to keep a few basic things in mind. And here are a few of what I think are those things. One. Instrumenting and cloud connecting an uncontrolled or out of control production process doesn't drive a dime to your bottom line. The fact is, factors like employee training, machine and process capability, and quality assurance, well, they don't automatically get better because you can now aggregate 10,000 times more data. And learning just how much money you're losing while lying on that beach in Cancun, well, that doesn't make things better either. Two, information has a price and it can be expensive. The ability to integrate a temperature profile at 200 points along one leg of a coolant manifold, well, that may show you that you have an imminent problem. But more likely, it's going to show you that you don't have a problem. But the cost of the sensors, filters, processors, and software, it's still there. And more importantly, in most cases, the significance of those gigantic meshes of data points is still subject to human interpretation. Think it's hard to pick out meaningful information in that wide deadband sensor system now? Try 2 o'clock in the morning with a line down while staring at three or 4,000 data points. Advanced, meaning big users, have the ability to use custom code to do much of the interpretation for them. But for SMEs, the real art of using this technology will be knowing what to pay attention to and what to ignore. Three, there is a time value to information. In the earlier data acquisition systems that I used years ago in industry, output was printed on paper. An actual system breakage or egregious error, well, that would generate a red light line stoppage, but most attributes were not SPC controlled, so we often didn't know that we had stepped outside an upper or lower control limit until it was too late. Of course, remedial action was needed immediately, and root cause analysis frequently devolved to asking the operator what she thought it was, then deviating from the book and experimenting with machine settings. Now, this is roughly equivalent to hiking into the woods, burning your map, smashing your compass, then hoping a bear will lead you out of the wilderness. And the irony was that the red flags that could have prevented the stoppage already existed in a mountain of fanfold paper in a box under that desk-sized printer. It simply generated large amounts of data at rates faster than engineering personnel could process it. So they fell behind, losing the time value of that data. Now, if you're looking at advanced systems to monitor and control your processes, a really good question to ask your vendor is, how fast can it tell me what's going on in a way that I can understand on a Monday morning with a splitting headache? Now, to be clear, I'm a big fan of systems that take the guesswork and grunt work out of manufacturing. I'm an even bigger fan of systems that help small and medium-sized manufacturers make money. And if you can sell me a system that can be operated by someone without a PhD in nuclear physics, I'll be a season ticket holder. Well, that's it for today's episode, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows not found in our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.